So I saw The Nun last night. I didn't like it. First off, before we get any further into this, let me just say, I'm not a professional film critic, I just like talking about movies. But by now, you guys know that. So The Nun is an origin story to the demon that we saw featured in The Conjuring 2, that being Valak, the demon nun. So The Nun's been out for about a week now, and most critics seem to agree that it's not a very good movie. But people on the street claim that it's the scariest movie of all time, that they love it, and that it was really good. So here I am, not really wanting to see The Nun, but I'm hearing the two different arguments and I think, I gotta see this for myself. But I haven't seen any of the other Conjuring movies since The Conjuring 1 when it came out back in, what was that, 2012, 2013? So this week I went back and rewatched Conjuring 1 and then watched the first time Conjuring 2. I didn't watch the Annabelle movies because I heard that those were ass, so I decided, hmm, probably not important. So going into this, I heard that it was going to be bad, also heard it was going to be good, so I went into it with an open mind, hoping for a really good movie because both The Conjuring 1 and The Conjuring 2 were really good and really scary movies. This was not. The Nun was fine. It was a fine movie, but it wasn't very good. It also wasn't really that scary. From the trailers, we know that it's going to be a jump scare fest, and that's pretty much what this was. Jump scares, one, two, three, four, five, oh, there's another one. It, it, uh, there was nothing really there. One thing I remember thinking to myself, near the end of the movie, we've gotten jump scare after jump scare after jump scare after jump scare, is I thought to myself, you know what, this movie didn't earn any of that. It didn't earn any of its scares at all. Because you can have jump scares in a movie, like, you, you have to to make something scary. But if that's your only technique to scare people, it gets boring. It gets really boring and it gets old. Especially when it's telegraphed so, so clearly. Now, I want to go ahead and say now that if you like this movie, if you thought it was super scary, I'm not judging. You can like it. I'm, I'm just saying I didn't and I'm giving you my reasons why. Real quick, I do want to mention, I am going to be talking about the story a little bit more in detail, so this is going to have spoilers. If you don't want this movie spoiled for you and you do plan on seeing it, totally fine. Click off, watch something else. If you don't care, let's continue. So The Nun takes place in 1952 at this abbey in Romania. We enter our movie with two nuns running from something. We obviously know from the trailers and because we, you know, we've seen the movie so we know what's up. So the story of the nun goes as follows. It's 1952 in Romania, and there's a priest sent from the Vatican with a nun in training sent to investigate the suicide of a nun. Those two characters are led by our third main character, Frenchie, this French-Canadian guy living there, who knows the area. So they make their way there, they get inside, they meet the head mother. I, I don't know religious terminology, so I'm gonna butcher it, I apologize. So the head mother tells our priest and our nun, the nuns at the abbey have a vow of silence. So from sundown to sunrise, they're not allowed to talk at all. So our pair has to stay there for the night uh, before they can get any answers. Frenchie gets sent back because he's like, I don't trust this place. So it's night one and shit's already going down and we're moving really quick here. First thing I thought to myself was, you know what? This isn't earned. This is not earned at all. You know, we didn't build up to this creepy atmosphere at all. So nothing that's going to happen is going to scare me. You know, there's that classic. Let's look at that option. Look forward again. Oh shit, something's behind me. But we're not going to do anything with it. We're just going to move on to another room. There's a lot of that in here, which is fine. It kind of makes it creepy. But then nothing happens. Or something does happen and it's a jump scare and then it just rides that like jump scare scene for a little while and it's not scary anymore like we've seen the monster we've seen the demon for more than like 30 seconds and it's not scary anymore because I can see it now I do need to give credit where it's due though the music in this movie was really good the ominous like chanting that you hear when you're when you first see Valak and anytime he's in the movie pretty much it's just like like really deep like kind of thing going on it's creepy it's like it's like chanting and it's evil 
That was really good. I really enjoyed that. You know, this whole universe... Let's talk about that for a second. I don't know if we should consider this a, a universe. You know, it's really just a, a series of movies happening in a row. Whereas with, let's say, for example, the most famous, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, we have things going on at different times. So we got like Captain America over here. We got Avengers up here. But then also like during this time, Ant-Man was happening over here. You see what I'm saying? Like, things have to happen at different times or at the same time within that universe. This Conjuring thing, it's The Conjuring, Conjuring 2, Annabelle 2, Annabelle the Nun. Like, it's just a straight line of, like, sequels and prequels. So I don't know if that's really considered a universe. I don't think I would, personally. I just say it's a series. Something that really bothered me, actually, in this movie was just as... It's existence kind of in general because it kind of takes away from The Conjuring 2 a little bit. What I mean by that is when we first see Valak in The Conjuring 2, Lorraine explains that there's a demon, there's a dark presence that's been following her for years and is taking a shape and a form to mock her faith of being religious, Catholic, I believe. But in this movie, it kind of just throws that away. So before we knew Valak as this demon who's taking shape of a nun, who's taking the shape of a nun to mock Lorraine's faith and to like make her distrust her own beliefs. Whereas this movie takes that and it goes, no, it takes the form of a nun because it came into this earth in an abbey, in a religious abbey. So it takes the form of a nun to blend in with the other nuns. But all the other nuns know that it's a demon or at least not a human and that it's evil so what's the point then why are you why are you still being a nun then you had a better reason for being a nun in the conjuring 2 and now you've ruined that with this movie keeping on the topic of valak right now we see him like maybe four or five times throughout the movie and they're definitely all highlights whenever he's on screen or she is on screen but the last, the last like climactic battle with Valak is a little silly, I think. We see, we see Valak's face a little bit too much, and that kind of takes away from the mystique, from the fear, because we just see this demon just like smiling, kind of creepy, but it's not creepy because it looks silly. You see what I'm getting at? Also, why were there zombies in this movie? That makes no sense. Like. Before, we, we knew that demons can't possess objects. They can only manipulate them to make people believe that there's a possession of an object. That's how it was with, with the Animal doll. That's what we learned in The Conjuring 1, was that demons don't possess objects, they possess people. So what was possessing the dead nuns in this movie, man? What I mean is, there's a scene where our priest is heading down to the catacombs, right? And he has to go through the delivery room and that dead nun we saw who hung herself comes back to life and is like terrorizing him. So by this logic, Valak is manipulating the body to fuck with the priest. But at the same time that's happening, Sister Irene is in the catacombs running away from Valak himself and the other demon nuns or the phantom nuns i don't know what they are but they're like nuns with no faces okay so she's running away from those people at the same time that this like dead nun is terrorizing the priest so is valak in two places at once or is there just straight up a zombie in this movie and if there's a zombie in this movie that's stupid that's just stupid that that killed it for me it really did something else that kind of bugged me was there was both a prologue and an epilogue I get why you want the epilogue. You want it to lead back into The Conjuring 1, right? What was the prologue there? It was almost the same exact shit. You know, what bugged me about the prologue was that you didn't need it. You could have just started the movie as is, done the title screen, played us the rest of the movie, and then given us an epilogue to tie back into the first movie where you wanted it to. That part was good. What having the prologue does is it makes this movie rely too heavily on the others in the series. 
you need to know who this character is beforehand before you know the intro or the origin story of it. Which I don't think you do actually. You could have just had a really good scary movie about this demon nun and then explained who it was with the epilogue. That would have been fine. That would have been totally fine. But they market this movie as the darkest chapter in the Conjuring universe. And nah, it really wasn't. I do need to mention that you can tell the difference with directors, especially with this movie. I haven't seen the Annabelles and I'm not going to because I heard they're not good and I just don't want to subject myself to that at all. I really don't. But you can tell that this was not directed by James Wan. James Wan did something amazing with The Conjuring 1 and then did a pretty good follow-up with The Conjuring 2. This was not. This was definitely not directed by James Wan and you can absolutely tell. It was just, it was just a mess of a movie. And that's unfortunate. I was kind of excited to watch it. Anyways, final thoughts. I think if you haven't seen this yet, you can skip it. You're not missing out on anything. If you really want to follow this series, this Conjuring Universe, if you've seen the other four, go ahead. I don't think you're going to get anything out of it too much. And like I've said before, if you like this movie, go ahead. I'm not judging you for it. I'm not hating on you. I didn't like it. I didn't think it was a very good movie. I think it was really forgettable. I just think that there's better horror movies out there, better scary movies out there. And you're not missing out if you if you don't watch this one. I wouldn't even say buy it on DVD or Blu-ray. This is more of like if it's on Netflix and there's nothing else to watch and we're drunk and so we're easily scared, then yeah, you could watch this. But I don't think you're going to get anything out of it. I'm I I didn't super forgettable super boring the only thing redeeming really was the music and like maybe that ending and not even the ending like the, the epilogue overall the nun it's like a four four minus honestly super forgettable super boring i didn't get anything out of this Anyways, that's all I have time for. I've been going on way too long. You know where it's at, Desert Meerkat here. Leave a comment if you saw the movie. Did you like it? Did you hate it? Let me know. I'd like to know your guys' thoughts. Like, subscribe, share with your friends. Appreciate you. Love you very much. And I'll see you guys next time.